Good morning, folks. Today we've got looks at advances in global electric circuit science, see where that fits in the evolving climate science picture, discuss lucky planets and how we're no different despite the Earth's catastrophe cycle. We're starting with the sun at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun was active at the coronal level. We've seen the sunspot group decay slightly, but also close the gap between the trailing and central umbra. There are minor flares only, contained within the active region. But indeed, all the interesting things to see on the sun today are found in the southern hemisphere. Filaments can't sit still. Coronal hole facing Earth today and that earthquake watch we mentioned yesterday officially begins. And of course, we do have those sunspots too, monitoring those for changes in the magnetic complexity. Folks, this is an artist's interpretation from the ESA, but everything shown was detected by the Storm Hunter satellite. The lightning, the superbolt, the elves emanation as the energy began shooting upwards, with the connection allowing a flow of particles from the storm level upward. This is, of course, due to an accumulation of that charge from both tropospheric processes and the global electric circuit feeding it from above. This electrodynamic system can be worked in minutes when there are changes to the ionosphere above, which means that we come to the world of climate in one chart and see something isn't right and must be missing. First, take in all of the macro to micro, from orbital elements to volcanoes and the sun to seasons to daily activity. Problem number one is up in yellow where solar variability grinds to a halt in their minds on about the 11 to 10 year scale due to a radiance changes in the sunspot cycle. So let me go ahead and fix that label for them. Indeed, the irradiance changes do not have much of an effect on shorter time scales than what we see with the shifting of El Nino and La Nina, but we'll give them that one. We're not done yet though, because we need to add some stuff on here. The solar particles have the same macro scale forcing as the irradiance does over long periods, but we've also seen dozens of studies on solar particles, their geomagnetic impact, and cosmic rays, able to affect the lower troposphere in minutes. Minutes. This is because from the flare to the CME arrival to the geomagnetic storm, the ionosphere is getting worked, and so does the global electric circuit to which it is connected. Stepping back to some of those longer scales, the discovery of solar forcing on the Asian monsoon continues its maturity. Correlations have been discovered on the centennial scale and the interannual scale. Up next, what happens when a nova hits a planet? Does it get blown away? Does it survive? Does it merely act like a super CME and work the magnetic field of the planet or strip its atmosphere if it lacks a field? It turns out that planets can even survive supernova. Supernova are a hundred to a million times stronger than the strongest repeating nova, the classical nova, dwarf nova, rapidly recurrent nova, and the solar micro nova. These are not going to destroy their planets. It's really much more like the planet gets tased by the sun after it's turned the juice all the way up. In our mind-blowing review of these tiny nova events, we've got another one reported that is so much smaller than what our sun does it's hard to explain. Well, no, it's not. The energy range on these is 10 to the 29 or 10 to the 30 ergs, which is like a strong X-class solar flare. That's it. The sun's micronova will be at least 100 times stronger than that. And even with Earth's magnetic field synchronizing its excursion and intensity minima, the Earth will remain, as it does every 12,000-year harmonic of the disaster cycle. The waves will invade and attack the continents, but it won't be towering over your head. It will rise like the tide, quickly, and for hours. A run-up, not the cresting wave we sometimes imagine. Just float away. Whether it's the rapid solar forcing or the Earth's disaster cycle and how I expect many, many people to survive. Learn more for free at the playlist links in the description box below the video, or on our channel homepage or at suspiciousobservers.org. We greatly appreciate your support. Observer Ranch email list for the Back 40. Email coming tonight. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.